Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my top 10 tips for first timers on the Disney Cruise Line. I am basing my tips for today, your top 10 tips on your first time trip on a Disney Cruise Line. I'm basing them on my first trip on Disney Cruise Line. So I've only been on two Disney cruises. I'm relatively new to the Disney Cruise scene, but I almost feel like I've been doing it forever. That's how comfortable and warm Disney makes you feel when you're on one of their ships. And you just feel like you're home. You feel like you've done it a million times. Now, Disney was not my first cruise line. Uh, I had previously cruised on several other ships and several other companies before my first Disney Cruise Line trip in March of 2018. But I don't know if I can ever go back to anything else other than Disney Cruise Line. Um, and I just love them. So if you're thinking about a first time cruise on Disney Cruise Line, you're definitely thinking in a good way. Uh, Disney Cruise Line really does everything well. And I can talk further about that in another video. But today, here's 10 things that you may want to make sure that you know about before your first trip. So the first thing is um, you're going to want to have a lanyard. And you don't get one on your first Disney cruise. Uh, so because you're going to need to have your card in your lanyard so that you can... Um, use it for your room key and it's also the card that you use when you if you want an extra um like a beverage that is not included an alcoholic drink or if you want um to purchase something in one of the stores you're going to need um this key it's also the same key that you use when you leave the ship in port and when you come back on the ship from port um you're going to need this as well so this is like your it's the key to the world um and you need it for everything you do. It also has at the very bottom, um, it has your, uh, when you eat and they're all num letters right now. So it doesn't, won't matter to you, but it has the order of your eating on there, which um, dining rotation that you have, as well as um, where your table is, your dining time, and um, also your muster location. So, there are many different things um, that this is important for. So you definitely need a lanyard on your first trip. The second thing I wanna say is skip fish extenders. Now, if you're sitting there going, what is a fish extender? That's okay. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and put a, um, a link to a previous video that I did on fish extenders. But basically this is a way to gift people gift strangers um during your trip and you will see and i'll put a um a picture here for you you'll see a um these hanging outside of stateroom doors and some people coordinate ahead of time to and they know who they're going to give gifts to there's these big groups that form about um giving out presents during the trip for fish extenders and um there are some people that just what is called pixie dusting and just put fish extenders, uh, put little gifts in fish extenders throughout the ship. I would say if it's your first cruise, skip fish extenders. I did it on my first cruise and it, it felt overwhelming to me. It felt overwhelming leading up to it, trying to find the, the gifts. And some people really enjoy that thing. They really enjoy crafting. They really enjoy creating gifts. And if that's you, I, maybe this will be perfect for you. Um, but my feeling is on your first Disney cruise, you really kind of want to take it all in. So if you're interested in the fish extender exchange at all, you may just want to pixie dust and and bring a couple things to pixie dust but not do a full commitment my suggestion would be not doing it on your first cruise and just kind of enjoying the ship itself and enjoying the amenities of everything there and not worry about fish extenders uh, my third tip is to bring dramamine i um i definitely get motion sickness so i definitely need dramamine and some people may not get motion sickness doing things on land, but you never know when it might affect you 
out in the ocean. So always come prepared. Now, that's not to say that you can't get that on board. You can definitely get it on board. You can stop by guest services. Um, sometimes they have it there or um, you can go to one of the shops, but it's cheaper and easier just to bring it yourself. I mean, you can get little tiny um, vials of Dramamine in your pharmacy or any place where they sell like aspirin and things like that. Um, so I suggest that I take that with me and I take some about an hour before I'm boarding the ship and I really have never had any major problems sometimes like the first day when you're sailing out of port because it's kind of like before you get to the open ocean it can be a little rocky um if you have bad weather every ship I think that we've ever been on has had some kind of little rockiness at some point except for one ship when we were on the Disney Magic in um, January of 2019 that was the smoothest sailing I've ever had um but you never know so come prepared and you'll be all right. I also um, like to use Motion Ease, which this just goes behind the ears. And I feel like if I take a Dramamine and then, you know, have this in my pocket or with me, I, I feel like I, you know, I don't know if that really works or not, to be honest, the Motion Ease, but it makes me feel better. So um, there's also C-bands, which go on your wrists. I have never been able to get these to work. I have them still. But um, I don't know if I'm just not putting them on right. People swear by them. Um, but this would be a less drowsy way. Um, Dramamine, even uh, the less drowsy version, makes me drowsy. Um, but, you know, I'd rather be a little drowsy on a Disney Cruise Line ship than not drowsy at all at home. So, give and take. Right. Next, my tip number four make sure you bring something so you can dress like a pirate. My favorite night on a Disney cruise line is pirate night. Um, and I, I, I think it's fun to play dress up. It is really fun to see all the people in their pirate gear from little kids um, to adults. There's kind of, you know, slightly put together outfits, like maybe it might be a shirt that has some kind of pirate motif, all the way up to full pirate, like, amazing like movie quality pirate outfits we were kind of in between there um but pirate night is so much fun and I think things are so much more fun when you're putting yourself right in the middle of that fun so dressing up for pirate night to me is not an option it is we are doing it game on right and I'm already thinking about when is my next cruise and which pirate outfit do I want this time I want to go a little bit more movie-like because um, just seeing some of the outfits was incredible. Now, that's not to say if you're not an outfit person or not dress-up person, that's not to say that you're going to stick out. Guys, there was everything there. There were people not wearing anything. They looked like they were having just as much fun as the people just wearing t-shirts, as the people who were wearing just a little bit more pirate gear all the way up into the full movie head to toe. So there's such a wide range. You're going to fit in on pirate night, no matter what you're wearing. Um, <clears throat> so I, my suggestion though, is to bring some pirate stuff. Now, if you don't, that's okay too, because Disney provides a bandana in your stateroom, um, that you can use for pirate night. So you can have at least a little something if you don't bring anything with you, or you forget, or you don't have room in your luggage, but I say, come prepared for pirate night. It's it's a lot of fun. Tip number five, make sure that prior to boarding the ship, prior to sailing away, that you download the Disney Cruise Line app. This app is so helpful when you're on board. Now, I'm the type of person that is enjoying being away from that connection that you have to have with phones like that someone's always going to call you or you're checking your, you know, your social media or your email and things like that. I love the fact that being on a, a cruise ship kind of separates you from that a little bit. But I also use my phone to take pictures. I do have another camera as well, but I, I use my phone for pictures. So, um, having my phone on me is already a given for a being on the cruise ship. But the app is so convenient. Um, my daughter is 14 now. So she was 
two years ago, 12, when we went on our cruise and I wanted to give her a little bit of freedom. She had um, met some kids and she wanted to hang out with them. And so she had a phone and I had a phone and we both were able to connect with each other through the app. We were able to send each other messages um, such as the one that I'm going to put in here for you right now. And there's really cute Disney themed icons that uh, you can exchange in your messages to each other. And so you can feel connected um, if you have an older child or even, you know, husband, wife, uh, parents, um, whoever, whoever you're traveling with. If you have somebody that um, you're going to be away from each other on the ship, but you want to connect, that is a great way to do it. Um, and it's also great because I... I like to, you know, kind of travel light if I can. I'm still working on that. But I travel as light as possible. But I like always like the option of having a place to do laundry if I need to. And we were on a seven night cruise. And I didn't necessarily need to do laundry. But I just halfway through, it's just so much easier just to throw everything in. Well, guess what? You can use the app for that. They will send you Disney, the magic people, will send you a little alert through the app when your washer or your dryer is done. So you don't have to just kind of sit there and twiddle your thumbs and wait for the laundry to be done. It'll send you an alert. That way you can go down immediately so that you're not holding up the space so someone else can use it and trade over your laundry. Um, I thought that was I thought that was really neat because then you don't have to just hang around. I know at the Disney hotels, you kind of have to hang out there um, when or waiting for your laundry, at least I do. I kind of, well, hang out by the pool. It's pools are usually right near the laundry. But this is pretty convenient. So I really like the Disney Cruise Line app. They do have wave phones in your room. So these are like, kind of look like little tiny phones um, that you can use to connect with other state rooms and connect with each other. So if you don't have a um, cell phone and you can't download the Cruise Line app, you do have a way to connect. Another thing that I like the... Disney Cruise Line Navigator app for is because in it, you have the daily list of activities. Now, I kind of like the paper activities because I love getting that paper on your bed right before you go to bed and taking a look at it. And it's really cool. But in the app, you can put little hearts next to your favorite activities. And then right before the activities, it's time for the activity to start, an alert will go off on your phone. So it can remind you. And I loved doing this and I did it for multiple activities and I might've had like, maybe there was like three activities I couldn't decide between. The alerts would go off because, you know, sometimes they overlap, but the alerts would go off and then I could, oh yeah, I for, totally forgot there was an animation um, class happening right now. I totally forgot that there was this tour of the um, of the cruise ship. So um, it's really neat that way. I loved that. Um, that was one of my favorite features of the app. So download the app before you board. Number six, see the shows. See all of the shows. Do not say, oh, well, this one, I don't know about this one. Just see them all. I will tell you that... First of all, the stage shows that they have are top notch. They're so much fun. Um, the Each ship has its own um, very own show that is part of the ship. And it, they are just amazing. I I, I mean, I, Disney quality is there. You, you just know the Disney quality for their shows. And it was really fun to watch. I will say, like, don't even discount the ones where you're like, well, this is not a Disney Disney show. This is somebody else they brought on. Like, for example, we saw the group Junk perform and they were fun. They were funny. Um, they're musicians and they play like different things like um, cans and um, you know, not your normal instruments making music, you know, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So don't discount any of the shows. Go to all of the shows. They're in the evening. And no matter if you have an early dining reservation or late dining reservation, you can still see the show because they show it twice. So um, definitely go see the show. Now, let's just say that you were a little not feeling well and you missed the show. Um, you can see it on your stateroom TV. 
So that does give you an opportunity to see a show uh, if you have to retire to your stateroom for whatever reason. Maybe you're just a little tired. You want to see the show, but you want to just kind of go lay down and be comfortable. You can kind of do that too. Um, I will say seeing it in person is amazing. When they show the, um, the performance on the TV, it's not like you're watching the live version of it. It's a pre-recorded version. So um, may not have the same characters, but or the same actors playing the characters, but still, um, it's another way to see the show, but see the shows. All right, number seven, this might be a no brainer, but wear sunscreen. You're, you, you might feel like, oh, well, I'm kind of on the deck of a ship. I'm not really out in the sun, but you really, really are out in the sun in the middle of the ocean. Um, and you might forget though, because you're constantly going from inside to outside. You're in your stateroom and then all of a sudden you go up to deck, uh, nine, I think was on the wonder and you're outside at the pool um, and then you're back in to eat and then you're back out at the pool. And it's a lot of, um, it can be like that false sense of, Oh, I'm not really outside. You know, I'm, I'm on the ship. It, so, but you don't want to get sunburn. I'm fair skin. I, so I'm speaking from experience, make sure you bring sunscreen with you um, and wear it appropri appropriately. <laughs> Number eight, don't miss the characters. Every day is like character palooza on a Disney cruise line. There are just characters all over the place. Like I just previously mentioned with the, the app where you can um, put your favorites on, you can put your favorites on for the different meet and greets. So you can remind yourself, oh, I want to go see Mickey in his dressy attire. I want to make sure I see him. So then you put your um, heart on the navigator app and then it'll remind you, but definitely see the characters. There's so many and they're all in like one, you know, location. You're all on the ship, not necessarily all in the atrium. So a lot of the characters are in the atrium. You'll find them in there throughout the day. You'll find them in there right before dinner, but they're also located around the ship. So you just definitely have to check either the navigator app or your navigator paper and, you know, see where they are. But don't miss the characters. It is a it's a great experience. Get pictures and just um, meet your favorites. Now, on the two ships that I've been on, and I'm certain this also happens with um, the Fantasy and the Dream, but on the Magic and the Wonder, they have certain meet and greets where you have to get a ticket in advance. And um, it's kind of like getting a fast pass. And you have to have that in order to meet that particular character. So for ours, it was the princesses and um, Elsa and Anna. And we were able to book that. I guess it's like booking like a fast pass um, it, ahead of time before we got on the ship. Now, if you're a first time cruiser, you kind of get last pick of everything. Um, the dates for people who have sailed 10 or more times open up first and then people who have sailed five to 10 times open up next and then who have uh, not sailed open up last. So you want to make sure that you um, don't get all upset if you don't get something like a character meet um, and it's your first cruise because sometimes when you right after you board, all you need to do is go to guest services and they might be able to hook you up with a, a meet and greet. We were a first time cruiser in uh, March of 2018 and we were able to get a uh, meet and greet for the princesses and Anna and Elsa all um, as a first time cruiser for, the, for our entire party. And we were traveling with 10 people, I believe. So um, it can be done. Don't let anybody scare you out there and say, oh, you're a first time cruiser. You're not going to get anything. It can be done. But the character meet and greets, you definitely want to book those in advance if you can, the ones that you need to. But believe me, there are so many other meet and greets that you don't need to book in advance. So that's okay too. Just, you know, don't worry. It's, it'll all be okay, I promise. Number nine, try everything. I mean everything. There is so much food on a Disney cruise 
Uh, you actually, you know what? You probably really can't try everything. There is that much food. It, it's just nonstop food. I can't even describe how nonstop it is. We like getting to the port as early as possible so that we can have lunch on board in Cabanas. That is our favorite place to just go take a, you know, it's a buffet. We get a nice plate that whatever you want and it is delicious. Um, but there's so much food. I love um, I travel, my husband and my son are semi picky eaters. My daughter and myself are more adventurous. We'll almost try anything about my son and my husband. They won't. So going on a cruise is a great opportunity because it's not like when you order off a menu and you're like stuck with what you have. And it, and so that sometimes you want to take less chance that way, because you, if you're going to pay for something, you want to eat something that tastes good or something that you know is going to taste good or something you're not afraid's not going to taste good. So, um, but on a cruise and even a Disney cruise, I mean, the food I thought was amazing. I thought the food was great. I had no complaints on the food at all, but on a cruise, it's time to try different things because if you don't like something, they will bring you something else. Um, my son, for whatever reason, only wanted macaroni and cheese um, sometimes a burger, sometimes nuggets, but he kind of just stuck to that like every day. I was like, there's so many other things you can try, but he kind of stuck to that. Um, I, on the other hand, was trying a little bit of anything I could because I wanted to see what other things taste like that I might not normally have. So my advice is try everything. And even when you think you've seen all the food on the ship, you might not have. Okay, so sometimes there are different establishments throughout the ship. Think of the um, the pubs downstairs that are in the adult area. I think it's um, deck four on the Wonder and the Magic. And then also um, some of the other areas where you might find like you play games during the day in the, um, or in the afternoon. Sometimes they have like little mini areas set up like hors d'oeuvres that you could have um, in between meals. For me, we never really had those because, um, we had an early dinner. So we had a 545 seating. And I mean, by the time they came out around four o'clock, I was waiting. I was not eating anything else. I wanted to save my appetite. So, um, if you have a later meal, those might be perfect for you, um, to try, but try everything. Tip number 10, enjoy Castaway Key from the moment the ship docks until the moment the ship is ready to pull away. Castaway Key is my absolute favorite place. I love it. It is a gorgeous island. It I, There's just so many beautiful views, especially of the ship when it's docked, that you can get from the island. The water is gorgeous. The sand is gorgeous. I never felt that the beaches were crowded. It is absolutely amazing. Um, even if you're not a beach person, you can walk around. There's plenty to do at Castaway Key. Um, but it is a nice, relaxing day. It's a nice, relaxing area. So even if you're someone that's like, you know, I don't know that I have to get off the ship at some ports because I know plenty of people like that. And that's okay. I mean, there's still plenty to enjoy, plenty of amenities to enjoy on board um, that you almost don't have to get off the ship if you don't want to, but definitely do not miss Castaway Key. That is so beautiful. I cannot say enough, you know, fabulous words about Castaway Key. Um, I just can't wait to go back to Castaway Key. That's how much I love it. Um, I did on uh, my first cruise with my daughter, we did the Castaway Key 5K. So they do have a 5K on the island. If you're not a runner, that's okay. You can do a light, a light pace. I'm not a runner. Um, that was only my second 5K. My daughter um, runs a little bit more than me. Um, and she ran with my brother. And they definitely beat me. Um, finished. But they have a nice um, 5K in the morning there. And even if you're not a runner, you can take a bike um, ride in the later morning in the early afternoon around the island. It's the same path as the 5k and it's just a great island. So do not miss Castaway Key. That is my, that, those are all my 10 tips for being a first timer on the Disney Cruise Line. But I have a bonus tip and I probably could keep going on and on, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it to 10 plus my bonus. So my bonus tip is if you like Mickey ice cream bars. 
which I do, and my whole family does, um, you can get them. Sometimes they appear on a dinner menu under the kids selection for desserts. So sometimes you'll actually see them there. Where they do not appear is on your stateroom menu. But if you ask nicely, when you pick up that phone to order room service, which should probably also fall under my try everything tip, uh, room service is included too in your whole cruise. Um, when you pick up that phone to order room service, ask them if you can get a Mickey bar and usually they will make sure you get one. Um, so unlimited Mickey bars on a Disney cruise is probably the main reason that my husband wants to go on a Disney cruise. Uh, but um, I love it. It makes me feel like I'm in the parks, but I'm on a ship. I think the um, Disney Cruise Line is kind of the best of both worlds there. So that's my 10 tips. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you have any tips as a first timer that you think people should know, please put those in the comments too. Um, we definitely want to help anyone who's traveling for the Disney Cruise Line for their very first time to have all the tips that they could use. Until next time, keep living the magic. Bye-bye.